Welcome everyone. I'm Nancy Bronstein and today I'm going to be talking about the Spiral Wizard. When we first came out with the MySonet software, the upgrade from Premier Plus 2, the Spiral Wizard was one of my favorites right out of the gate. So today I'm going to share with you some of the ideas I've come up with how to use it and different things that you can do with it. But first I thought I would whet your appetite by showing you some of the things that I have made with it. Um, since we're coming into the holiday season, I thought I'd start with a little bit of bling here. This table runner, it has, let's see if I stand up and move back, you can see it a little bit better. It's got three central spiral wizard designs. So there's this one and the center one, which is kind of looks like a atom to me or some sort of blow up, you know, something from physics class. And then this one, which is a repeat of the first one I showed you. So that's one idea of something to do with it. The, the spirals tend to, at least to me, look like stars or something from outer space or just, I think they're na a natural bling um, creation, or they can be, especially if you use metallic threads. Then uh, I have another table runner that's not bling. It's kind of the opposite, more, uh, but it is some of my favorite colors. And this has got kind of three different styles of spirals. This is a simple spiral. And um, then I took something like that and used some Derwent Inktense pencils to give it some color and depth. Uh, the ink tense pencils I've talked about quite a few times, they are, they look like a pencil, but it's actually ink inside and you can get this nice watercolory effect. And then this one has many different spiral designs on it. And all three of these, I did the design and then I took it into the quilt block wizard to quilt the block. So you can see it's been quilted right in the hoop. And then I did a quilt as you go to put it together. So right off the bat, that's a, one idea. You know, you can add some um, fabric paints or uh, the ink tense pencils to the drawing to, you know, jazz it up. Or you can use multiple smaller spirals to create a design. <clears throat> this almost looks like something microscopic to me, like microscopic organisms. Then another idea for things to do with the spiral wizard um, is that I like to um, come up with alternate ideas on how to quilt things. And I had this quilt that had blocks that were repetitive blocks and there was an area that was three by three that I needed to fill up. So I created a three by three spiral and used that to do the quilting. So this, the, you know, this stitching goes all the way through the quilt to, to quilt these pieces together. And then the rest of the quilt I did stitch in the ditch and then added some little embroidery designs on the red get the whole effect in there. So I'm going to uh, review uh, my thought pat, uh, process when I created this one, once I open up the software, which um, I think I'm going to do right now. So bear with me as I get this set up here. And I should say, please ask questions, you know, if, if something comes up. And I have two people helping me today, Meredith and Amy, and they are reading the comments and they're going to shoot me any questions that um, come up because if I was trying to read the comments and look at the questions and think about what I was going to tell you next, I, um, I'm sure I would forget some stuff. So I'm going to share my screen here and go into the software. So when I open up the software, this is what I see. I have uh, open in front of you the platinum version. The Spiral Wizard is also in the gold version. Now, the versions of the software can be a little bit confusing. So let me briefly explain a couple of things. The um, software comes, maybe I should unshare my screen so you see me. 
Um, the software comes in two basic different modes of purchasing. You can buy a box version or you can buy a subscription. And the box version has a silver, gold, and platinum version. And the subscription has just silver and platinum. Silver being the most basic, platinum being the most um, advanced. Or, you know, not, um, you can do similar things in all of them, but when you really get into the creative stuff where you're creating things, things from scratch, you're going to want the platinum. But the box version also has gold, which sits quite a, kind of in the middle between silver and platinum. And the um, spiral wizard will work in gold and platinum. Some of the things I'm going to do with the spiral designs are only in platinum, and I will try to remember to tell you when that is the case. Um, when I go into the create module, that is only in platinum, that is not in gold. So I'm going to reshare my screen, but I think I have a question or a comment. Let's see. I love the fabric, but it doesn't look like cotton. What fabric is it? I think you are referring to my, my bling table runner. And you're right, it's not cotton, because everything else here I do have is cotton. Um, it is, I've got some stuff that's almost like some kind of lame on here, you know, very, very shiny. And then this is some sort of knit fabric that was shiny, um, probably not real practical as a table runner because it would get stained right away, but, you know, I just like the way it looked. Um, and this is cotton up here. I think this is the sort of thing that I'll put it down and when people come over for the holidays and then as soon as food co comes out, it goes away. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to presenting the software. <clears throat> okay, so um, when you have the platinum um, or the gold, you'll see things on the left-hand side. These are your wizards. And then all this stuff over here are just files that I've worked on recently, and I could access them very quickly by uh, uh, clicking on one. So I'm going to, I could, I could just click on blank canvas and then go to the spiral wizard from there, or I can go directly to the spiral wizard by coming down here and clicking on spiral. So I'll do that. And when that opens up, it opens up this um, interface here, this window where you can create your spiral designs. And <clears throat> for those of you in my age group, it probably will remind you of the spiral graph that you perhaps had as a child. Um, I had one for sure and I love that and my Etch-a-Sketch. Um, and this, this spiral graph will bring back some nice memories. So, uh, just going through the different features of what's in this window, up here is going to be the size of your design, basically. So if I wanted something to fill my 360 by 260 hoop, I would go up here and put something like um, 240. <clears throat> Um, because my 360 by 260 hoop is 260 width wise. So I wouldn't want it, to, it will go outside of the hoop if I put anything bigger. <clears throat> now the next two buttons, random, and when you click random, it just will keep giving you just random um, designs. I'll show you what I mean. And it's just warning me I'll lose this design if I keep going. So basically uh, what I do is I just kind of click random a few times until, oh, that's interesting, until I get something that looks kind of what sort of what I want to do. So we could start with that. Then over here, of course, is the color that's chosen. And then we have all of these different sort of cryptic little icons here. However, they're not cryptic totally because you can hover over them. It will tell you what the thing does. To be honest, what I typically do is just start playing with the sliders half the time and I ignore what the what's on the left hand side, but sometimes it is helpful to know. Now, percentage of diameter, I do use this on occasion where, first of all, I set my size up here, but I may make a spiral design that's large with the central uh, part that's blank and then put another spiral inside that. And in that way, I will 
play with the diameter of either the big one or the small one to make them fit together. And um, I'll demo that in a moment. Now this is the number of petals. So this has, it says eight here, and you'll see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> then this one has to do with the, it's kind of the shape of the petal. Let's slide it over and you'll see. So it's, the petals themselves are changing shape. And that's a good one too. And um, curvature, change that. And you'll see that the, the um, curvature of the petals changes. It's sort of hard to predict what it's going to do. And rotation will rotate the um, image. Then down here, you can make it more complex by adding um, kind of duplicates in a way. See what I mean? I went from three to five. <clears throat> Then curvature spacing is sort of mysterious to me, but I just play with it until I get something that I'm looking for. And rotation is also, it rotates the image or the, the petals in relationship to each other. So it's just um, sort of unpredictable to me what you're gonna get. What I tend to do is if I find a design that I really like, I'll take out my cell phone and I'll take a picture of it if I think that I might want to come back to it at some point and I know I'm going to be editing it a lot. I can take a picture of these numbers because if you have a spiral design that you like as a jumping off point, you can put your numbers in here and it will give you that exact spiral again. Like I, I'll show you. I have one that I worked with earlier. I'm just changing these numbers to reflect what I had previously. And you should see, look at the difference in the uh, spirograph design. It's pretty interesting, the variety that you can get here. Okay, so this was the design that I had previously. Now, another thing you can do is you can lay one design over another. So if you want to um, put one over the other, you go down here and you click on plus. And I generally go in and make it a different color. And what it does is it lays exactly one, one an exact copy in that next color right on top of the original. Now I have this uh, ghost mode on right now, so I'm just seeing the last one I created. But um, if I click that, I would see both if I offset one. But right now the pink is right behind, so you can't see it. So let's see, we have a question here. Is there a platinum box version upgrade to my Sonet from, from Premier Ultra Plus 2? Yes, there is. So just inquire at the dealer where you purchased your um, box version or at your if you've moved your local dealer and they can set you up with a uh, upgrade. There is an upgrade path. So um, just to show you that there is pink behind the other the, um, the blue, I'm going to rotate this and you'll see that there is indeed pink behind there. And that makes kind of a almost like an optical illusion effect. And previously, I was saying sometimes you might want to make one, you have one on top of the other, and you might want to make one smaller. So I'll do that. And so now I have this nice blue design inside the pink. So there's just so many things, so many different designs that you can make with this. And of course, down here, it gives you the stats on um, how many stitches and the size and the number of colors. Now you do have some stitch options as far as how you want it to stitch out. Right now the blue is, is selected. So I could change the blue from a running stitch to a double stitch to a triple stitch and the stitch length. Now I would suggest that you do at least a double stitch. Um, I find the running, just a single stitch doesn't, doesn't pop as much as I would like. 
Um, and a triple stitch will be even more bold. And, um, and they are delicate to begin with, so I think that's why you want to go with a double stitch or a triple stitch. But I'm going to leave that as is now. So that's about it on this page. So I'm going to click OK. And now we see, that, see it on our screen. So I have here, let's show you a sample of what I did with that. So I made that um, design. Actually, what I did is I saved that design and I took it into the quilt block wizard. I'm going to show you how you can do that. And then I made, I stitched it out and made a pillow from it. So it doesn't show up great on the screen because of the colors that I chose, but I chose them to go with this camping fabric because this is a pillow for our RV. So the green and the orange seem to go well um, for me. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you how you can make those um, lines more, even more bold than a triple stitch. So I made the same design and um, utilized the create module and, um, or the, uh, was it the create module? No, I went into edit this into the stitch editor and went in to um, change the stitch type and made some of these orange um, petals into a narrow satin stitch. So you can see how the same design looks very different. You know, it's very um, delicate here and then it pops a lot more here. And I also changed this, uh, the first echo layer to a satin stitch as well. And I really like this effect. Um, I just like the way that it pops quite a bit better. So we might as well go, I'm, first I'm gonna show you adding it to the quilt block wizard. And then I'll show you how I changed that stitch type. And I have to thank Phil Carlton because when I was thinking about what I was gonna talk into, about in today's class, I knew you could do that and I couldn't remember there was one one crucial step that I couldn't remember, and Phil helped me out, and um, he's a wealth of knowledge, and thank you, Phil. So I'm going to go back over and share my screen and go through adding that first design to the quilt block wizard to make a quilted background. Because what I did, since I knew I was making a pillow, is instead of using stabilizer, I used... Uh, batting because when I make a pillow, I just feel like I, I like to have the batting, a layer of batting between the cotton and the um, pillow form. It just, um, I, I just like the way it feels better. It just seems more substantial. And um, so that I, uh, that's what I did with these. And a word while I'm talking about that, I will mention that depending upon your embroidery machine, you may find that as you're going through batting, you may need to adjust your tension. Um, if you have a top of the line machine, that's probably not true. However, depending upon your embroidery machine, if you see that the tension's not tight enough, you may want to adjust the tension. On our machines, we have our top of the line machines, we utilize thread portioning in embroidery. And um, so, if you felt that you needed it a little bit tighter, you'd have to turn off the um, uh, in Viking the joy of uh, the uh, deluxe stitch, stitch system or in the FAF, the active stitch technology, then it will switch over to tension and then you can increase the tension right on your screen. But I don't think you'll need to do that. It, but I wanted to just let you know that if you find that it's not tight enough for you, that you might need to increase your tension. And I hope I didn't confuse people with that. So now I'm going to go back to the um, my Sonet screen. So I have this design, and I want to take it into the quilt block wizard in order to make it into a quilt block. 
So I'm going to right click on my design here and this is called the film strip. And I'm going to copy it. Then I'm gonna go into create up here in my toolbar and go to quilt block. And with the quilt block wizard, you can make all sorts of quilt blocks. I'm gonna choose the version where you have a central embroidery because I have my spiral design. You could do a, choose a, um, a shape and have the, all the quilting done on the inside or just the opposite, or you can just have a cross hatch or stippling or echoing the shape of your block or just an outline of your block. But we want to place a spiral design inside of our block. So I'm gonna choose that first choice and click next. Then I would um, you know, go ahead and, and uh, choose the shape that you want your block to be. There are many shapes here. Most of our quilt blocks, more often than not, they're square, but you know, I could have gone with a rectangle here. Um, it's up to you what you know what shape you have, maybe you've got hexes. And I'm just gonna leave it on 260, then click next. And this is on my clipboard because I had copied it before I opened up the quilt block wizard. So I'm going to paste that in, then I'm gonna click next. Now this blue here in this blue dark darker blue line indicates where the quilting is going to occur in relationship to your central design. So I like it to be a little bit tighter than that. So usually I bring the margin down to oh, three millimeters. If your design is really tight in your block, by taking up a lot of room, you might need to take it down even further so that it doesn't, um, uh, your design is with the quilting is not outside of your block. Then I'm gonna click next. Then you have all these different ways that you can quilt this, this block. You have stippling and you have options here and you can make the stippling micro stippling if you wanted to. Change that to 1.5. You can make it a triple stitch. You can make it more of a geometric stitch. This is micro stippling like I would never want to do free motion, believe me, but it does look nice when you embroider it out. Um, or you could do something like echoing. I'm not going to go into all the bells and whistles on the quilt block. I could if you want some, you know, if we have time at the end, but this might be the subject of a new, another Facebook live. But the echoing, you can also choose the, the way the corners are, whether you want it to be single or double or um, triple stitch. And the gap that you want, I'm gonna make this a little bit tighter and click okay. So that's basically what I did on my design. And then I'll click finish. So now I have a quilt block. And um, if I want to, at this point, to go into this and make those lines more uh, uh, narrow satin stitch so they are bolder, this would be the point to do it. And, <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, there are a number of steps to doing this. So I want to let you know that um, Meredith and Amy have placed in the chat a list of instructions on how to do this next part. So I'm gonna go over it step by step, but know that in the, at the top, uh, at the very top of the chat, there is a list of uh, instructions on how to do this next part because it's 10 steps. So <clears throat> what you need to know is first of all, you need to select your design over in the film strip because if we select this one, we're actually selecting the um, quilting and uh, we really wanna select the um, design on the inside to change that design. Then um, I'm gonna go up to my toolbar and click on home. 
Then I'm going to go to Edit Design. And I believe that Stitch Editor, Editor is not available in gold. I think this is one of the things that I'll be doing that is not available um, on, in your gold version. So when you open up Stitch Editor, you get a screen that looks like this. And I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> and the next thing you need to do is to go up to your toolbar and select Object. And then you need to sub select the uh, petals that the ring of petals that you want to make more bold. So I'll click here and you hopefully can see on your screen that there's a bunch of circles on some of these lines and those are the ones that will be changed into whatever stitch that I choose. So then what I'm going to do is I go up to convert. And I can change it to double stitch or a double zigzag or a triple stitch at this point. I can change it to a satin line. I can uh, change it to a motif line. Now, a motif line in my mind is decorative stitches. Um, so I, that's how I translate that, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I wanted to choose a decorative stitch, I would click there. And you wouldn't want to choose this stitch because as you can see, it's eight millimeters high and eight millimeters wide, and it would just overwhelm our little delicate design. If I were to choose anything, it would be more, um, much smaller, like either bean stitches or maybe candle wicking. So here's a candle wicking stitch. I'll choose that and click okay. And you'll see what that looks like. So, now we have candle wicking on the outside. I had chosen satin stitches for mine, but I thought you might be interested in seeing what the candle wicking would do. Um, but we can undo. And instead of choosing the candle wicking, we'll choose the satin line. And I think four millimeters would be, again, overwhelming for this delicate design. I believe I chose something like 1.7 or perhaps two. And there, there we have our, our satin line. Now, this screen is actually the stitch editor screen that opened up uh, when I clicked on edit design on the previous screen. When I close the screen, I go up to the right, click on close. Now I have my design with my satin stitches in place. So that this is the um, just such an improvement to me in my mind. I think being able to make some of these petals heavier, it just makes a world of difference. Unless you want something that is just purely textural and in the background. But if it is a central design, I think adding this um, stitch intensity, you know, makes it um, so much better. Okay, so another thing that you can do, let's see if I can, do I want to do the, yeah, we're gonna click, now we're gonna, we're gonna open up a new window <clears throat> for another idea. Let's see if that's gonna open up here. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna take a minute here. We'll get a new window. And I'm going to show you a sample of what I'm going to um, show you next. So I'm going to stop sharing. So another effect with the um, Spiral Wizard that I really like is um, adding some applique to it. So this is a similar design, and what I used in the background for the applique is a, it's a very soft kind of netting, um, kind of like nylon, but it's uh, translucent. So you see a little bit of the green behind, and I think it really complements the 
translucent quality of the spiral graph design. Um, I really like the effect that I got with that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. I um, have to think about this one a little bit more. And I'm going to show you how you would go about making something like this. So I'm going to go back and um, share my screen. So no questions yet, huh? Oh, I got somebody buzzing me here. No, nope. nothing that I have to worry about. Okay, so um, back in, into my software here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create the um, applique in the background. So again, this is something that you need plat uh, platinum for. So I would go up to the toolbar and click on create and then digitizing. And digitizing will open up um, an edit design window again. And uh, I'm gonna start a new design with no picture. And when I go up to quick create, there are all these um, shapes, ready-made shapes that I can utilize. So I'm going to just choose a circle like I did before. If I wanted to, though, I have many, many, many shapes to choose from. So I choose the circle. And I'm going to just drag this and make it a little bit bigger. Bear with me, I've got two phones buzzing here right now. Okay, so I have my, this is my applique. Now, by default, it had created the applique with a pattern fill background. I do not want that. What I want is no fill. So I'm going to go back over here to the film strip and delete this one. I just want an applique with a satin line around the outside. So I'm going to click here and make this a little bit bigger. But I basically want it most of the hoop. And I can go in and make this satin stitch narrower. I'm going to right click over here in the film strip, go to properties. And I, this, I knew I was going to use this netting, which I knew would be fine with a more narrow um, satin stitch. <clears throat> so I'm going to put it at 2.5. And so now what we have is an, an applique with a narrow satin stitch on the outside. So I'm going to close my digitizing window. And because this module is integrated directly with the embroidery edit screen, I don't need to save it and paste it back into the other screen like we used to have to do. So I'm just going to go up to the upper right-hand corner and click on Close. So I have my applique now, and now I can go into the spiral wizard. And I think we're going to put this more around 180. And then I want it a little bit more, a bit more complex than that. So I'm going to add maybe some more petals, but I'm going to want diff. I don't want the petals to look like that. We're getting there. That's looking better. I 
this actually might be interesting, putting this right in the middle. So I'm going to make this much smaller. See what this looks like. And then I'm going to add a, um, another layer. But that one I want to be, yeah, we'll leave it at 180. I'm going to add another spiral to this, change the color to blue. And this one we want at 100%. And you can kind of see the pink one behind there. It's smaller because I had changed the percentage. And now we're going to work with the blue one, the blue um, spiral on top. And let's have some more lines here. Ah, that's beautiful. And change this a little bit. It's getting better and better. I don't know that we if we need the pink in the background. That's just rotating it. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted. I wanted that central pink part in the middle. Now you can see what that looks like. So I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to click OK. So now I have this right in the center of my applique. And I could make this a little bit bigger. And I'm liking that. And I could do some quilting around the outside. Um, some other things that I could do, I could go into our embellish tab and I, I could add some um, a ribbon embroidery around the outside if I have the, our, our, creative, um, our creative ribbon, our creative embroidery attachment that will create ribbon embroideries in embroidery mode, or I could do beads, or I could place, um, I could stitch placement um, stitches for putting down different uh, crystals and beads. So there's a number of things that one can do to make this more elaborate. I'll go, go with ribbon. Now I'll pick a shape that I think will look nice on the outside. Maybe something like this. Now we're in the ribbon selection. I would uh, move this to a smaller diameter, not diameter, what, what the width of the uh, width of the ribbon would be. And I'll keep that color and click OK. And we'll make this much bigger to go around the outside. And this is again a ribbon embroidery. And you do need the creative embroidery attachment. The, in order to do this. So there's so many different things and fun things that you can do with um, the spiral wizard. Another idea I had mentioned doing um, surface design and I'm going to stop sharing so I can show you a sample. Um, you could take these um, spiral designs and make something that's more textural and just to create interest. So I created a very um, small simple spiral and then I, I duplicated it and just randomly placed it all over a 360 by 260 hoop. And I put some uh, vial in there and then made this um, little zippered bag. And I think that the spirals just really make the bag. I mean, it's otherwise it would be this boring little zippered bag. And adding those spirals to the um, vinyl just, uh, I don't know, it makes, to me, I think it makes it really interesting. Um, so it can be that these just add a bit of texture. 
and you know which could be on a garment it could be all over a vest wouldn't that look nice um you could put some you know if you have this design you can put some maybe a um, monogram on the inside or another little design on the inside so um there's so many things that you can do with the spiral wizard now we have um, quite a bit of time left because I have, um, I think I've covered all the things that I prepared to talk about with um, the Spiral Wizard because it is pretty simple to use. Um, any questions before I move on? Oh, Meredith tells me they love the little bag. Yeah, I, I love the way it turned out. I mean, it's so simple, so simple. And, and it was so easy to make. I mean, I you know, made, that, made this this afternoon. Um, okay, so we have a question. What needle did you use to embroider onto the vinyl? Just a, um, a 90 embroidery needle. You know, if, if you have a, a lower level embroidery machine, you may want to use a denim needle, um, you know, something a little um, tougher, but um, I find the 90 just goes through that very easily and, um, you know, the thread doesn't break and Oh, I remember there was a question about um, is the fabric not cotton, didn't look like cotton. And that reminded me that I wanted to mention one thing about this um, particular project. This is actually cotton thread. So um, you don't always have to embroider with embroidery thread. Since it was a quilt, I didn't, I wanted to experiment with thread that was not shiny. You know, I just thought that I would like the effect, which I do. So you can use other threads, um, but you know if it's a delicate thread, you might want to slow your machine down. And um, okay, somebody says I love that it looks thicker. I think that and I think you're talking about the white uh, cotton thread. Yeah, the cotton thread. Yeah, it does look thicker and. Um, I've done that a few times on quilts. Um, I can't remember the other sample that I have that I could pull out, but yeah, it's it's nice to play around with because it's just it just has different a different quality. The embroidery thread is nice because it's got a nice sheen to it, but sometimes you don't want it shiny. Oh, I I know I have a quilt that I um, I did the whole, almost the whole quilt with cotton thread on a black background. And then I use the ink tense pencils to color in the thread different colors. So um, it's a lot of fun to play with different, you know, surprising fabrics that maybe you don't typically embroider with and with threads that you might not typically use. So um, any other questions before I sign off? Um, okay, Amy's wanting me to remind you that the next MySonet Facebook Live is Wednesday, December 14th at 2 p.m. Central with Mickey, who will be using the Family Tree Wizard. So you can make your own family tree pretty ornate very easily with that wizard. And <clears throat> Mickey really knows the software in and out. So she's a great person to, um, and also she's funny and and a great person to hang out with. So, you know, if you're interested in the family tree wizard, please tune in on 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Central on December 14th. And as always, you should be aware, uh, maybe some of you aren't, that these videos are recorded and then they're placed on our YouTube channels. And um, just so you know, um, if you um, find that we talk too fast, you can always stop it and rewind it or you can put the playback a little bit slower. And instead of a per person talking really fast like this, they might be talking at a speed where you can follow them a little better. <laughs> okay, so I have a question. Have you used metallic thread with spirals? I have, in fact, this, this right here is metal gold metallic thread. So um, I would, the, I would say that if you're going to use metallic thread in general and with spirals also, you want to um, have quality thread and um, slow your machine down a little bit. Um, I generally don't have a problem with it beyond that with the top of our top of the line machines because they have the telescopic thread guide and that takes the tension out for the metallic threads. But if you have a lower level embroidery machine, 
um, you would want to put a metallic needle in and uh, really slow it down. And let's see. How do you save the finished design to file in order to export it to a machine or a USB stick? Okay, so I've got, uh, I'll share my screen again with my design on there. So I've got this crazy design here and um, I'm gonna take out the ribbon because I don't think I'll probably stitch that out with the ribbon, but I might stitch this out. And if I want to save it, I'll go to File. And um, I probably will export it first and put a copy on my hard drive so that I have it as a record. Or I could just save it as, um, yeah, I would export it as a VP3 so I have it there. A VP4 is easier to change in the future, but I'd probably save it as a VP3. However, if you don't have a Viking or a FOF, you can save it as you know, any of these machines, you know, whether you have any of our competitors' machines, you know, Janome, Brother, Baby Lock, Bernina, um, some of the multi-needles. So I would generally save it as a VP3 if I, unless I was going to go back and work on it some more. And then I would click OK and then place it. Um, I'm going to put it in my designs, in my spiral folder give it a name but three now i have it on my hard drive if i wanted to i could go to say after i've exported it i could save it as or yeah i could save it as whatever format I wanted it to be. I mean, uh, I could export it and then uh, let me start over again. If I wanted to bring it to my machine as a VP3, I would give it VP4. I would put give it a name. And then I would over here, I would find my USB drive. Now I don't have a USB plugged in, but say my Google Drive was a USB, I would click that, and then I would just save it there. Now, if I didn't want it to be a VP4, I would go to export, and that same process that I just did, and um, when I saved it to my hard drive, I click on OK, and this time, instead of saving it in my documents folder, I go down to my USB drive, and give it a name and save it on that USB drive. Now, if you have one of our wireless um, top of the line embroidery machines, you can go to file, send, and I don't have a machine on, but if I did have a machine on, it would, I could click here and I could send it right to my embroidery machine and I would, uh, go downstairs and my file would be open on my embroidery machine. But both of my machines downstairs are now turned off, so it doesn't show up there. But with um, our top of the line machines with wireless, you don't need a USB stick. So any other questions here? Okay, I'd like to thank you for joining me and I hope that you will um, open up your MySonet software and open up that spiral wizard and make something beautiful with it. And please share it on, uh, on our Facebook page because we'd all like the inspiration and see different ideas. And um, happy sewing. Bye-bye, everybody.